If you need to do batch image editing on the Mac, then I've got a great little app to tell you about today in this video. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec, and in this video, we're gonna be talking all about a little app called Squash, which is a batch image editor. Now, this is not one of these videos about an application that I'm gonna tell you. I've been using this for years and years and years, and I couldn't live without it. Quite the opposite. I've been using this application for a little over four hours. <laughs> I found out about it today by watching uh, the Ecamm Live stream uh, in uh, the Ecamm Live Facebook group, and Doc Rock uh, mentioned it, and uh, it is just what I need. <laughs> Previously, I had used an application called Picturesque on the Mac, but that has not been around for quite some time, I don't think. Uh, so, uh, so yes, this is certainly going to be uh, uh, a very useful little addition to my image editing suite, shall we say. <laughs> and it's a great little app, and it's part of the Setup bundle. Now, I've made videos about Setup before and about some of the other applications that are available as part of the Setup bundle before, and uh, this has basically inspired me today to actually make a whole series more of videos about some of the other apps that I use in Setup. So what is Setup exactly? Well, Setup is basically a collection of apps over 200 in fact, that you can get access to by uh, signing up and uh, subscribing to Setup for just $9.99 a month. And you essentially get a little mini app store that you download and put onto your Mac. And then you can browse all of the apps and just install all of the ones you want, or you can download them all and try them all and then just uninstall from within the Setup app, uninstall the ones that you uh, don't want. The great thing about Setup is, if there's these little apps that maybe you just need to use them occasionally or you just need some little small component of them where you perhaps wouldn't go out and buy the whole app but because you've got it available in setup it makes it really easy to just add it in and use them as and when you need it and then take it off again if you don't but squash is definitely one that i'll be leaving permanently installed on my computer because it is a really neat little app and i really like the uh, the design of it as well so i'm going to show you now it's very simple it won't take long <laughs> it's a great little app to get uh, used to and you'll soon figure out exactly what you can do with it so uh, as I have because like I say I've been using it for four hours so it can't be that can't be that difficult <laughs> if even an idiot like me can figure it out <laughs> so let me come over and show you the uh, the app itself and here it is within the setup app and you just download it from here and then it'll appear on your computer and then once you open the app itself the interface is basically like this. Uh, it starts actually with a blank uh, panel here, but this is basically where you will just drag in any images that you've got. So you can just drag in whole batches of images over to this panel here, and then they will appear in this sort of tiled format. There is another view, however, that you can have. So if you double click on any of it, uh, image, uh, this is just a sample from the app. If you double click on it, then it will load the image up full screen. Uh, and you can also just change between the uh, views, either a single uh, image or a uh, uh, tiled view uh, over there. There's also a tray that you can pop out where you can create presets, but I'll come on to those uh, shortly. Uh, and then there's also <laughs> a sound tab here, a little speaker. And that is, I don't know if this is going to come through actually, but you've got these different music that plays in it. I'm not quite sure why. <laughs> uh, so, it's just a little feature. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very strange feature, uh, but it's called a Zen track, and you can have that playing in the background while you're doing your image editing. Uh, I'm not sure I'll leave that on, to be honest. I might uh, just choose my music elsewhere, but it is there nevertheless. I'm not quite sure of the origin of that or why it's in there, but it is there anyway if you like that sort of thing <laughs> so uh, whilst we're in the settings by the way I should uh, say there are little interface sounds like the little swooshes and swishes as you activate things so you can choose to have those on or off uh, you can also choose between light or dark or automatic and automatic will just match the whether your, your system is on light or dark uh, and then you've also got the default view so as I mentioned it starts in that grid view but you can also have it default to the editor view and then you can also change the icon for the dock uh, the effects I'll come on to because that's basically toggling on or off some uh, specific effects that you uh, you can have in the uh, in the panels here but we'll come on to that in a moment so what we've got here essentially we've got this slider to slide between the uh, the different the uh, different effects that we're adding on it will become apparent <laughs> shortly uh, and then up in the top corner here we've got the original so that's the original file size and the original uh, image size and then over here you've got the exported image size and file size as well so basically down this side we've got a series of different things so resizing adjustments effects and so on so if as you toggle these on or off 
uh, it basically opens and expands the panel so that we can enter some more details. So now I've toggled on the resize uh, panel. Uh, we can either change it by width. So if we've just got a maximum width that we want to fix the images to, we can do that here. Uh, you can also set a maximum height or a maximum overall size in terms of pixels. Uh, you can have percent, so it will be just a percentage of the original. And what you'll see is as I'm changing that, it changes this little file size. So if I make it even smaller, you'll see that whir around. And then there we go, it's even smaller. So that is how you can adjust it there. Or you can just have free size where you put in a specific size in terms of uh, dimensions there like that. So obviously if you're resizing things for the web or wherever it is, uh, then this is a good way to do that. Next, we've got adjustments. So this says enhance image details. So here we can change things like sepia, the monochrome, add blur and so on, sharpen the image, vibrance and what have you. Uh, and as you can see, it's just sort of changing all of those in the, uh, in the preview. And then you can obviously use this slider to slide across to see the uh, full effect of it. Uh, you can also uh, change the way that this is done. So at the moment we've got this little toggle on here which is, looks like a little split screen icon. Uh, but if you want, you can go over to this view uh, where, in fact, let me toggle that one off. You can go to this view where basically you see the whole image having been affected by the, uh, the changes you've made. And then if you want to just see what the original was like by comparison, you click and hold the little eye and then it goes back to the original and then back to the changed version again and then again you put that slider on you can just swap between this view so then we go to the uh the next one down is effects and here if i toggle that on then we've got some sorts of filters like you might be familiar with sort of instagram style filters uh pre-defined in here so you can choose one of those or toggle it back off again. Uh, you can also add some borders. So there are, is a uh, so limited number of border styles basically. So this is styles around the edge of the image. Uh, so there you go, that's how many, about eight or 10. <laughs> and then there is, you can get some more border styles as well from here, so that will go online to fetch them. Uh, next is the uh, watermark, so you can add a watermark uh, and it's defaulted to my name, there we go. <laughs> but uh, you can't add image watermarks, so you can't do, uh, as far as I can tell, you can't do image watermarks where you're going to add like a logo or something like that over it using this. Um, but then you can change the text and then you can also change the, uh, the colour. Uh, and then also you can change like the position, so bottom right, uh, but you can also have it at... Uh, bottom center, bottom left, middle, so on, top left, or you can have it diagonal or fitting the screen and what have you. And then also you can change the size and the offset. So that's offset. If I'm on the corner, then it's going to offset it from the corner further. Uh, and then the, also the opacity of it, you can change there as well. You can also uh, change the font, obviously, by clicking into the thing. You can change the font to be whatever font you want, the font weight. Uh, and then you can also change the color here as well. If you want to add on multiple different uh, uh, watermarks, uh, text watermarks, you can click this plus sign here. I'll take that off. And then you've also got the compression. Uh, so you can change the file format and then the uh, compression. You can change that here. Next, we've got the uh, metadata. So the you can choose whether you want to preserve the GPS location and the camera model, which is uh, a lot of people don't actually realize this, that this data is embedded in photographs. And so uh, if you are sharing photographs online uh, that are maybe sensitive, location sensitive, uh, you might want to strip out the GPS location. A lot of people don't realize that that is actually embedded into the photo. <laughs> so uh, it's often a good idea to uh, take that out. Um, next is uh, renaming. So if you want to do batch renaming of the uh, the files, so you can add a, a either prefix, suffix, or replace the text entirely with uh, something there. And then you can change the case of it and also decide what to do with white space. So if you've got gaps in the uh, file names, either remove it or replace it with either a hyphen or an underscore. Uh, next is the dates, so you can either retain the uh, date created or date modified or strip those out entirely. And then next is the export, so you can choose where to export the images to uh, and you can choose a location and then choose whether you want to overwrite the existing files or not. And then simply click on export to export the images. Now if I come back to this uh, little side tray that we had over this side, if I click on that one, uh, then you can also, once you've set all of these things up, 
stop if you've got a specific preset that you use uh, regularly for um, uploading to your website or wherever it is uh, then you can actually just click on this plus button and create a website uh, not a website create a preset so I'll just call this preset <laughs> and save that and so that means then that now we've got this preset saved. So whenever I drop new images in, if I want to apply that or one of the other presets that I create, then I can just simply do that in there. So that is, in a nutshell, all there is to that app. So it's a little 10 minute video because it's, there's not much to uh, to learn in it as such, but it is such a great app and it certainly replaces, uh, like I say, picturesque if anybody used to use that one and was looking for a replacement. This certainly is it. And uh, definitely check out the setup bundle as well. And uh, that's a great way to, uh, to get this app. If you have found this useful, then as always, please like and subscribe and don't forget to share this video with anyone else who you think may find it useful. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link to my setup playlist over on the right hand side with all the other great apps that you can get as part of the setup bundle. So I'll see you there. Have a great day.